Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning as we embark upon this season of Lent. Today we welcome Neil Biddescombe who will give the reflection today. Neil, you may remember, joined us in the original lockdown. Neil is now completing his final year at Sarum College in Salisbury and will be ordained in the diocese later in the year. Today we also welcome Mr Wayne Higgins. Wayne became the head teacher of St Andrew's School last September. Wayne introduces himself and explains something of how the school has been working in a time of COVID-19. Do pray for him and for his new work. For both Neil and Wayne, it has been a big year, but one full of expected or rather unexpected surprises among all of the restrictions. So welcome to you, welcome to Neil, and welcome to Wayne. We meet in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you are very near. As Easter grows closer day by day, help us as we travel through Lent and help us to be ready to welcome you today. Amen. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on love, on fire, with love for you now and for ever. Amen. So we make our confession. Turn to us, O Lord our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear then the words of God's forgiveness and grace. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Lord, forgive us and heal us. Amen. And so I'd like to welcome Mr. Wayne Higgins, who is the head teacher of St. Andrew's School. Welcome, Wayne. Thank you. And as Father Graham said, um, um, I'm Wayne Higgins, I'm the head teacher here at St Andrews, which I started in September. So as you can imagine, it's been a strange, strange time to take over a new school with uh, all of the COVID restrictions. Um, school itself has been a very different place since September with uh, lots of different ways to sort of manage the COVID, um, the COVID pandemic whilst we've been in school. So we have bubbles of classes and the children obviously not being able to mix like they would normally which has been really sad in a way. I mean, it's been a different way of learning, uh, for sure. Um, but as we've, uh, as we've gone on, we've sort of adapted and, and made things work and tried to make the children feel like school is as normal as possible. But obviously we started back in January as we went into our third lockdown. And obviously the schools have, although they've been closed, they have been open for children of key workers and vulnerable, uh, and vulnerable pupils. So here at St Andrews, we've had We've had about just about 25% of our normal sort of school intake, so around about um, sort of 80, 90 children coming in every day and taking part in lessons. But learning as it is is a little bit different than it has been. 
So uh, those children that are at home, we've switched over to a remote learning kind of style of teaching which has been a steep learning curve for everybody, including the teachers and the children and the parents at home, which have been amazing. Everyone has adapted so quickly and well to what they are doing. Um, so, so, yeah, so it's been a bit strange. Um, and the, like I said, the children have adapted well. We've moved forward with things like um, how, how we use technology to in, in, engage our learners at home, which has been brilliant. Um, and also supporting those families that are at home, because obviously it's been a big ask for a lot of people to take on schooling their children from home. So we put in a lots of support, well, uh, welfare checks um, and things like that, as well as providing food hampers for, for families that, um, that need them and vouchers. Um, so we've been keeping those going and making sure that they're okay as well. So, yeah, it has been a different environment. and. Uh, but I think we've adapted well and the children have been amazing and that's the bit that the, the real strength of St Andrews and the community around it is the fact that that and the parents that have been putting the support in. And I must mention actually the positive um, feedback we've had from the parents that are at home schooling their children. You know, we've had w uh, welfare hampers from parents which have con you know, contained all sorts of things to keep the staff going, which has been amazing. We've had loads of positive messages and emails saying how you know what a fantastic job we're doing and things like that. So um, I couldn't say thanks enough for all of that because as a as a staff, it's the sorts of things we need to help keep us going because you know we're managing our own anxieties here as well. Um, so to be in here every day, um, putting ourselves uh, you know uh, out there uh, to have that sort of feedback is great. So that's been a really pl a positive. So thank you very much. Um, that's a little bit, a little bit of what it's like at school um, for us. And I hope for, for everyone you stay safe and we'll, we'll be back to some sort of normality and I can visit the church soon and see you all. So thank you very much. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust. In you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit the Holy Trinity. Our reading today from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel 
is the first allusion to the Holy Trinity in the Gospels. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit together. Of course, there's a whole issue of gendered terms here, and I'm not going to be able to cover that within this talk. Now, I know it's not Trinity Sunday, but I'm going to talk about the Trinity for a few minutes today. Hopefully, you'll get some things to go away and think about, but I'm not going to be giving you a definitive explanation. Augustine of Hippo said back in the 5th century that if you can fully grasp it, it's not God. And I urge you to hold on to that as you're wondering why I'm not giving you lots of answers. So, why God as Trinity? Well, perhaps the way to understand why we have this seemingly baffling doctrine is to see it as the inevitable and legitimate way of thinking about God, which comes from our consideration of the words and the works of God. If we look at the scripture and our continued Christian experience, it looks like the only possible answer. That's not to say that the Trinity is explicitly described in the scriptures, rather that scripture points to a God who can only be understood in this way. God didn't explain the Trinity in scripture. We worked it out with God's help. The three main elements of our vision of God that are part of the doctrine of the Trinity are that God created the world and gave it form and order, God redeemed the world in Jesus Christ, and God is present in the world, sustaining us. From this, we can get the creator, sustainer, redeemer explanation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. But we need to be careful not to reduce God just to these functions. God is so much more. We need to keep seeing the oneness, not the threeness. When we speak of God as Trinity, are we speaking literally or are we speaking metaphorically? Now the way that we answer this question will have implications for our approach to other faiths. If the Trinity is in some way descriptive of God in God's self, then that fact will perhaps present an obstacle to interfaith dialogue. If the Trinity is a metaphor which, however central and formative it may be for Christianity, makes no objective claims about God in God's self, then it presents no insurmountable problem for interreligious dialogue and cooperation. So, it's quite hard to say what the Trinity is, but it's a bit easier to say what it isn't. Now, for example, much modern theology doesn't see a hierarchy in the Trinity. It sees equality. There is one God, not three, and they're equal. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not separate modes of being for the one God to operate in. This doctrine of the Trinity was essentially complete by the end of the fourth century. And at that time, through much debate, we had the recognition of the full divinity of Jesus and the full divinity of the Holy Spirit, which gave us the formulation of the doctrine of the Trinity, embedding and clarifying those insights and determining the central relationship. The doctrine won out over docetism, modalism, tritheism, Arianism, and a range of other alternative points of view. And moving up to today, how we visualise the Trinity can have a subconscious effect on what we think of as normal in society. For example, if we see the Trinity as a triangle with one point at the top and two at the bottom, as we often do see a triangle, Father at the top, Son and Holy Spirit at the bottom, then we have the beginnings of a hierarchy. With the terms that we've used, Father and Son, 
we have a patriarchal hierarchy. Paul Fiddis talks about this as justifying the power of the one. The one that is declared right by those with power. It may be a king, it may be a capitalist society or communist society, or Brexit, or a bishop even. At its harshest, one could say that this hierarchical, subordinate model of God is outdated and is propping up the outmoded hierarchies we see in the world. A non-hierarchical vision of God encourages a view of society that is less hierarchical. Think of a circle rather than a triangle. It would mirror the equality of relationship within the God self, within society. A society that is more equal. Now this can be described as a social Trinitarian perspective. Perhaps Covid has highlighted how we don't always value people the way that we should, how society doesn't always value people the way that it should. But you might want to take something away from this talk that might perhaps help you to better understand the nature of the Trinity, remembering of course that if you can fully grasp it, it's not God. So I offer the vision of a rainbow. The rainbow allows us to distinguish and appreciate the different colours of a sunbeam. There is only one beam of light, yet the colours blend seamlessly into one another. There is, within the Holy Trinity, there is one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. As we enter into prayer now, may we be still to breathe slowly 
to re-centre our scattered senses upon the presence of God. We pray for the people, nations and churches of God's world, for Justin and Stephen, our archbishops. We pray for our local church, for Bishop Peter as he continues to isolate following a stem cell transplant. For Bishop Ruth and Archdeacon Anne as they oversee the diocese and archdeaconry. We pray for the work of our local schools, for staff and pupils. We pray for Neil and Wayne and the work and the responsibilities they have. Finally, we pray for our families and homes and this community. We name before God those friends and family who we love but no longer see, remembering Sister Ruth and Frank Burton. Lord, hear our prayers and use them to open the way of your kingdom for those we have prayed for. The Collect for the First Sunday of Lent Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.